Welcome to the Green Hour presented by Cleveland School of Cannabis. My name is Lisa Zwarner. I'm the Director of Education for our Columbus location. And today I am pleased to introduce brand developer and talented artist, Todd Pearl. And he's gonna give us a little background today on how he took his creative abilities and talents and he applied them to the cannabis industry. So welcome, Todd. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> what up, <laughs> this is better known as T Dog on Instagram. Um, so let's start from the beginning of your journey and tell us uh, about your career history and how it developed and how it worked into the cannabis industry. That is a great question. By the way, I like uh, someone's got an Ohio welcomes you sign up there. That <laughs> yeah. Nice. Thank you, Ohio. Um, well, obviously given if people know have seen my work it's it's nothing you can do overnight i've been doing it since i was a kid so i've been always an illustrator artist and then when i got to i went to uh art school when i got out of high school i didn't really i decided in high school that whether it was the right decision or the wrong decision i said i'm going to make my living as an artist and i didn't go the necessarily liberal arts normal liberal arts path and I went to art school and then I went out to California and I just developed, I got a job as a young 21 year old out in Los Angeles for one of the top ad agencies, uh, Ogilvy and Mather, which is, if you look that up, they were, they're one of the, like the OGs of the old school advertising agencies. And I just, you know, ground level started working there. And then it just wasn't my speed that, <laughs> kind of that Thai advertising world. I was, you know, my background is a more lifted kind of a person, needed more creativity. And so I, uh, I delved into the music industry where I got a job at um, Radio and Records, which is one of the top, was, it folded I think back in 2009, but it was one of the top music trades for the industry like Billboard Magazine. And, uh, I started to get my chops doing illustration and advertising design and being in LA, being young, it was, you know, it was just a great uh, foundation to it all. And then, um, and cannabis was always a part of my creativity. I mean, um, it just was part of the medicine that motivated me where, you know, I'm tired of the, <laughs> you know, the stereotype out of there, out there that it makes stoners are just people that sit on couches. If anything, cannabis has been a motivational um, element to my whole life. And that's, we're talking 40 years now since this all started. And uh, so then I uh, got into, you know, more of the music industry and I, and I started, actually, I started doing ads for the top acts, because this was a weekly publication from Bruce Springsteen to Barbara Streisand to Snoop Dogg to all of them. And Columbia Records noticed my talents. And so I left the paper and I went out on my own as an independent designer. And I just started, you can go on my, my, uh, my toddpearl.com site. You'll see some of the stuff I did for back in the day for all the top acts. And so it's kind of funny how the music industry was the beginning and cannabis was always kind of a part of it. And then as the world changed and cannabis became more accepted and normal and legal and then businesses started popping up and it was almost like a, a natural transition for me to just bring my talents to something that was part of my lifestyle and philosophy and overall, uh, you know, just uh, way to be. Is that, that's pretty that's good. A, in a nutshell. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That's kind of a cool story, but then it, it kind of enveloped. And I remember uh, probably the first time uh, I came across you, you were starting to represent some of the larger well-known breeders in the cannabis industry and you were actually developing um, strain artwork and branding for those famous or well-known strains. Well, there you go. And I mean, that's, that's chapter two, because what occurred was 
you know, my main folks, this is how it all started, which is really cool, was back, um, it was 2016, yeah, early 2016, a friend of mine, Mike Smith, who is my friend, grower, breeder, whatever you want to, he has many names, but uh, just a, a great guy, and he had entered a, uh, a grow into the Cannabis Cup in 2016, and he knew that I was a great illustrator, and he said, dude, why don't you, um, this is the wrong poster, why don't you design a, um, oh, here it is. Sorry, I didn't have it ready. Design me, a, you know, a, a label for his strain, which was Girl Scout cookie. So that was your first, that was the, that first, was the first strain done ever strain design done because he I wanted to label his entry into the cannabis cup. Wow. <laughs> and so <laughs> I said, absolutely, are you kidding me? So we did it and he didn't he didn't he got an honorable mention, I think, something like that. I can't remember how they rated it. He didn't win. But he came back that weekend and then we sat and we started talking about all the names of the strains. And it just was a, like a light bulb went off in my head because how I love to illustrate. Um, I don't know if any of the students were, you know, had an, any chance to see some of the illustrations. But so I decided to do some research and I looked up the top 24 most popular cannabis strains. And I came up with this idea is like, okay, as I was researching, we we're over 700 plus known strains, I said, oh my God, this is like a, a, a bottomless pit, not a bottomless pit, just a well of, of, of strains that I could be drawing forever. So I, I made this like claim that I was gonna, I was on a, a vision quest to uh, pay proper tribute, il illustrative tribute to every worthy strain known to mankind. Oh my God. <laughs> and um so it took off and i started i actually uh started so i got on the social media and i started making this claim and then i got some press i actually found this weed blog and they loved the idea so we did an article and then uh, now this weed which is a Huffington publication, they saw the article and they said, hey, can we do an interview? So I did an online interview for them about this. And it just, be it just became this monster on itself, but just, you know, I was like, this is perfect. Because now, and so as I went out to events, I started to get to know people because that's who I am. I'm just a person who knows, you know, I go to the events and, and it was just this whole new community that was waiting for me. <laughs> it really was. When I got there, I could just feel it in my body and my bones. And it wasn't about getting high. It was about the state of mind. And um, so I started meeting people and then I started understanding more about, you know, the, the, you know, the top growers and breeders. It wasn't like I knew over 40 years who was growing what in California. <laughs> You know, right. before the internet right <laughs> yes so <laughs> but fast forward because go and so what happened was in order to promote my art i said i'm just going to start going to events mm -hmm. and i just started you know it was like it was a commitment to say this if it, i'm going to make this work and be a part of this i got to go out and meet the people so i just started going to events left and right and it just kind of, be, and then I started meeting Brian Growers, like, may he rest in peace, uh, so cool. We met out at the Cannabis Cup in 2016 and we got to know each other. And before you know it, I was designing, I designed the Chernobyl, the Jack the Ripper, all these strain designs of his. And then he, when he broke from his TGA situation, he had to create a brand for himself. So we created the Dank. 
And this was just a box. This is a prototype actually for his um, extraction uh, to hold the jars for the extraction. So what I'm hearing from you is networking with like-minded individuals is what's helping boost, you know, what you're trying to achieve here and probably wouldn't be able to be as success successful as you are without being able to do the networking at events and meeting the like-minded individuals in this industry. Right. And, and that like-mindedness, I, 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 I just have to put out there is this, love and passion and appreciation for the medicine itself mm -hmm. and what, what this is to our planet and to our culture and to our society and to humanity. I mean, it's only been in the last hundred years that it's been vilified. Exactly. Yes. And I think it's been a wonderful experience just over the last maybe eight to t eight to 10 years of being able to group uh, without fear um at events right like to put this shirt on i was gonna wear something else and i said no i i contain thc <laughs> because <laughs> it's my medicine of choice right and it helps my life stop not just my you know that term lifestyle it's just it's i don't like it so much it's how you live your life mm -hmm. and it's a part of a part right. of mm-hmm um, so I know that you have, um, maybe on your computer or uh, around you somewhere, some uh, examples of maybe some of the artwork you've done, or you can show us a little bit of uh, what you yeah, put Yeah, that, in fact, and you and I talked about it, but I, and I, I, I found a couple here was one of the, the, the real attractions to what I do is not just the end product, but the process of how I how I create these things. Cause sometimes I'll, I'll go to an event and someone will say, and I'll show, they'll see the art and they see me and then they'll say, you did this, you know? And it's kind of like, they're just seeing the end product. So here, I'll show you a little something here. This is a, um, let me get it up here. So this is showing after I've penciled the drawings, by the way, I want everybody to know who might be artists out there, how I create the art is people go, do you do it on the computer? Well, I still do it the old school way where I draw with pencil mm -hmm. and, and then sometimes I'll ink it, but either way I'll scan it on the computer is where I do all the colorization. So take a look. This was a recent um, thing I did for a company in Western Michigan, in fact, uh, edible company called Canazotic. So here we go. You can see the screen now? Yes. This one, I've already penciled the image and I'm just now inking it. And the cool music you're hearing is, um, I've been talking about <laughs> collaboration, which is really the cool part of this industry is and I should show their artwork. I wish I had that up. Maybe I have something quickly. Oh, here's for a company here. I'm, I'm staying local. This is for a company up in Traverse City. Doyles. Now this is where I'm working on the computer and I'm colorizing now. So, yeah, um, but the music is uh, a company, Mendo Dope. I think you're Mendo Dope boys. I do, but uh, there may be a lot of students that don't. So right, so, there, so there's this, let me see if I got their artwork candy here. I, sh I knew I should have had them up. But you, if you're on Instagram, you go to Mendo Dope Boys. In fact, my artwork is being featured on a product. They just, a, a uh, refrigerator sized corridor and they put the two strain designs I did for them on either side of the unit. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I wish I had that. I don't know, how can I connect to my phone? That's what I need to do because I got my phone hooked in here. Let's see what else I got here we can show. 
Um, my, what, how about one of your, just uh, any strain? Um, right, I'm looking and, right here. Uh, this. Tower. Well, not against second guys. I got plenty. It's just picking the right one. Here's one that was. This is. Let's see. Yeah, this is for a, actually a very high CBD content called Canatonic. Right. You get an idea how I work with the pencil. This is so. See how I I I really do my research on the on the strains. So I look at the origin of the strains. I look at the, you know, the, uh, the crosses of the, the plants. Yeah, I was going to ask you how you get your idea to develop that particular um, strain that you're looking at. What, what, what generates the ideas in the first place on, you know, what- That is a perfect question. My ideas are, one, my crazy mind, but Two is the research. I do the research. I really do the research. Not only do I, I go through all the, from Leafly to All Bud, I go through all the uh, periodicals to kind of whittle down what is the truth of its origins. I, I try and uh, I research who is the top breeder, who's, who's bringing this medicine to the community. I want to honor them as well sometimes. This one is for uh, Romulan. <laughs> Indica. My favorite part is this the slippers. <laughs> yeah, kind of tell me what your vision is behind this. This well, let me stop photograph. there. Go ahead. Tell me what the vision behind this actual photograph is for Romulan. So kind of, kind of show me like, you know, point out because it may be hard for them to see. I, I can kind of see slippers and I All see. All right. So, yeah. So, for example, um, I look at, you know, the benefits of the medicine. Mm -hmm. And one of the popular benefits of the medicine is for pain relief. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, and as you see there, it's an indica. And, you know, we could get into talking about cannabis itself as far as the differences of why people use different strains of cannabis, you know, um, you know, they find it, 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 they sleep better or there's right. more pain relief. You can see here, I got the top left. You can see the white rhino because that's part of its cross, I think. Oh, okay. And then, yeah. And then I see down at the bottom, you have like a, uh, is it legalized? Yep. Yeah, I just legalized and therapeutic. So I, I'll do all the, now the, the slippers is just kind of my fun play on, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, the guy's just chilling, you know? Yeah. He's not, he's not an aggressive uh, uh, Romulan that's going to, uh, you know, put the phaser on kill. <laughs> exactly. I think I saw you do one for Blue Dream or. Something. Oh, yeah. Where's, oh, here's my Blue Dream. This is a good one. Here we go. Let's try this one here. Is that the one I want to do? Yeah, here. Still dreaming. A little nicer music there. And see, in the dream I'm talking, if you notice here, I'll pause it for a second here. You'll see on his cap, because it is a Cali-based strain, that's where it was developed pretty much. And it, part of its cross is the haze, the hazes of the cannabis world. And yeah, don't start quizzing me on all the crosses, okay? Right, no. <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, let's find another one here. This one's kind of good. What's this one? What's this one? Oh, that's upside down. We don't want to watch that one. Hold on. Uh, oh, this is good. This is White Russian. 
that's AK-47. So I said, where'd she put my gun? It's a cross of AK-47 and White Widow. So you get the idea, I just go to the end. So yeah, yeah that's my... Uh, do you ever have breeders that actually tell you what their concept is and then you draw it or are you generally? Exactly. Open? Now that's where it gets fun because when I work like, let me see if I can find, um, hold on, let me go to, um, here, I'm going to find Chernobyl. That's the one I'll talk to you about. That was, Oh, yeah. I, oh, no, this one's good right here. The Sunshine K. Do you see that? Yes, I was going to say I like that photo. Okay, so that was with Midnight Roots. And mm -hmm. there, Jake from Midnight Roots. Um, let me cancel that out. So, hello. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. I'm not sure. you're fine. I'm trying to do too much on one screen here. Hold on. No, I don't do not want to crop the image. Uh, don't crop and there we go. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So let's see, go up a little bit. Yeah, so when Jake comes to me, obviously we, we start talking and he's telling me about how it won an award in 2018. So I included the Cannabis Cup trophy in there with the 2018 on it. And also the Fire 18 is the little thing in the pot. You know, I do all this little detail to kind of, that's his cross, uh, his specific um, cultivar that he created. I think that's sunshine. what makes you so individualized is because Whenever you look at some of your artwork on these strains, it's almost like telling a story. Absolutely. And you kind of have to really look into that photo and then you'll start seeing little pieces of it. And then you start put, putting it together as if, oh, I see why he did this now. So I, I just find that really interesting. Right. And then, you know, they'll have their, they'll have their input. Like, I, I, you know, and I wish... Next time, maybe we'll do this. We'll do a case study on one particular strain, and then I can show you all the preliminary drawings that got it to this point. Because, uh, and that's why I like working with them. I'll, when I work with a client, you ask a bunch of questions. You want to know what their vision is. You, you write it all down, um, and then you put your take on it. That's how I do it. And mm -hmm. I'm giving away my secrets, but that's fine. Um, and so. When I came back to him, I don't know. He said, oh, he did want a, a, a hot rod in there. He did want, so I made this smoke catfish and riding a, riding a hot rod powered by a big old bud. <laughs> Does it have a diesel type smell to it? Is that what the, where that came from? Well, or? now that's, that's the other thing. Sometimes with the, that's a good point when you start doing any kind of, uh, automotive or vehicle people start to think that um the fire 18 yeah i think it does have a more of a gassy absolutely mm -hmm. i that's it's just an, my interpretation of the uh, bud in the motor would be that must be mean right right, right. The gas I, I, you know and, and and the thing is lisa it's crazy i just these last five years i've done i'm up to i'm close to 100 i'm over i think 85 to 90 strains that I've designed in the last, you know, so I'm on my way to doing over those 700 if I live long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're on a good, uh, good plan there. So. That's, I know, I actually did kind of figure it out, figure it out, and I think I can get it done before I'm 70. So that's, that's a good. <laughs> Stay on track, right? Right. <laughs> So oh, I got I, I to draw one today. Hold on. Let me see if I can find something else here. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to ask you how you like it. Please. And if anybody has a question out there, Aaron, David, welcome. I see your names. Where are your <laughs> lovely faces or your cool artwork? 
up on your tags, just your names, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no, I really am glad you're here. I'm serious. Our students are shy, so. That's okay. okay. <laughs> That's the thing you got to get over. Listen, people, you know, that shyness thing and that nervous thing, like going to events. I never wanted to be so much a celebrity. I mean, a personal guy, but it, my interest wasn't to be a celebrity. But as I went to the events and I, and I saw that there was, it was very cool because I got to start to be able to easily talk to people because of that celebrity mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And then and, and I find people, but that's getting to the shyness part is that, yeah, it's, it's not easy. You got to, what's that old saying? You got to step into those, into the, get out of your comfort zone to, to get ahead. Uh, absolutely. Confidence helps as well in what you're doing. But that's the thing. The confidence comes, and I'm going to tell you people, the confidence comes from doing it. It doesn't come from having it. If the only reason I'm pretty good at it is that I've been kind of an it, out an extrovert or whatever that term is since I was a kid. So I, I just have more practice at it, but, and good examples are like Robin Williams. The, the truth was about him. He was terribly nervous before anything, you know, it was like being almost sick nervous. So like you say, you just got to, uh, not that that I'm condoning <laughs> doing it. If you don't like doing it, you know, but, uh, here, let's see what else the other art we, we got here. I'm gonna try and let me try and find some cool here because I haven't. Yes, one of uh, one of the elite breeder growers that brought us to this place where we are today passed away. God, it's been about a couple months now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. His, uh, his book. He had a, a book. Well, he did what? Dank. 1.0 and dank 2.0 yeah i got the 2.0 book my 2 yeah i got one and did he write inside of it um time the clock is ticking yeah and i and then i did that um oh here here we go um, but oh wait i gotta switch screens can you stop sharing for a second for me? You're, you're good okay. at that yeah i sure <laughs> stop sharing there we go there we are so here's the one this is the graphic. Yes. Yes. And basically the poor guy just had just a tough thing between his, his, uh, his medical issues. And then, then his house burning down 2017. Yeah. California Rosenberg. fires. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He barely got out of there. He maybe was with his dog and he, he made a joke about it. I was on the panel that day. He made a joke about it. He goes, he goes, I got out of there with my dog and that good hash I had. And instead, I, I could have picked up the, the, the hard drive with all the, <laughs> the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Walked out without the computer. And here's the, uh, the logo I did for him with the, that, I did that character putting his glasses on the leaf. Yeah, I love that one. You That's know? Perfect. So, let's see if I can. Oh, here we go. Here's his emblem. Is this it? Where's the dank jar box? So if anybody has any questions, just out of, you know, whatever, just about what you've seen so far, if there's something you're thinking about, put it out there. Do they do it in a chat process? Or can they chime in? Uh, they they can unmute themselves and ask away if they so choose. Um, but uh, right now, I, I think I wanted to ask you a couple more questions unless somebody's got something else they want to ask. No, please ask. Okay, so I was going to ask you some uh, to name maybe some of the top five strains that, in your opinion, the top five strains that you've done artwork for. Well, it, it, is your context from the, the love of the how the artwork I created or the actual strain itself? I, I guess I the the ones that would be most recognizable would. Oh, that's a good question. Well, you know, I got to admit, the ones I did 
for artwork. And I don't even know if he's using the artwork because with all the, with his passing and I don't know how the company's working, but you know, for Subcool, I did um, Chernobyl, Jack the Ripper, Slimer. Um, why am I having, I don't know laps. What else did I do? Oh, the one that I'll probably go to hell for. Hold on, I'm gonna find it right now. Is Jesus OG. We should uh, show my Jesus OG. Is that was that a sub cool string as well or TGA? Yes, it is. Okay. In fact, I, I hope I have the picture of him. There was a picture of him with it, but uh, is this it? Yeah, here it is. So this one, and this one, you know, because you got to think about it. Um, You'll have to reshare. Right, yeah, because I have a great love for for the carpenter, and I, and uh, you know, you got to do it right. So here, go ahead if you want to share a screen here. Let me, I can do that, right? I can. Do you that. have to share it, yep. And then I can unshare. Go, it. Share a screen, and boom. Are you seeing that? Yes. Okay. So cool. subcools. I love. Is that what that says? Well, I it's basically love one love, Jesus OG, but you know, it's a combination of the Jack the Ripper and Hell's OG. So I put that on his cool shorts. And uh, and then you have. Uh, it looks like rosin dripping down his head. Well, yeah, <laughs> and and rather than the thorn, right. You know, crown. I just got the bud crown, and and you know, anointed with oil. I've always said, and there is, there is speculation that that oil was hash oil. You know, mm -hmm. so of course. <laughs> but you know, I I and, I, and I, there was something that hit me that, yeah, he's a little stone, and so yeah, he put on. He forgot. He just put on in one sandal. And he had left a sock on the other. That's cool. That's fine. <laughs> no problem there. I'm, yeah. I'm sure he loved this. Uh, what you what you had done with. Well, there's a, and I wish I could find. It. You'll find it on my IG. Is that there's a, they printed this up like six feet tall. Okay, for one of the events. Mm -hmm. And so there's a picture of Subcool on the left, and there's this guy that goes to all the events. You've seen him, Cannabis Jesus. Oh, uh huh. Mm hmm. So he was he was in the picture as well with the artwork in the center. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he was kind of. I was trying to think of uh, a way to describe that gentleman, but um, if you're out, if you ever go to Nashville, there's always the Tin Man that is uh -huh. down there. Oh right, right. He's well known. Very right. well -known. people actually want to no, go. I, to I, I saw him. I've been to Nashville. I have yeah. seen him. And uh, that the this particular character you're exactly. talking about events is exactly. the same kind of thing, same concept. So who else have I done just tributes to, whether it was directly or indirectly? Uh, meaning, when I say that, either they commissioned me or I just did it, and then we have now a friendship, and now they're looking to work with me because of it. Um, in fact, one that I'm very happy about, and we've developed this great kind of online friendship is uh, with DNA Genetics was the Kosher Kush mm -hmm. uh, design I did. And uh, so, but there's, uh, I, did a, I did a nine pound hammer for, um, for uh, Jinx Proof. Jinx, mm -hmm. And I did the, um, but then I was commissioned by like Mendo for their signature strain, the Mendo Dope strain. And then the new one that was just released was the Tropical Sleigh Ride okay. uh, for the Green Dope Project. Um, Is that something they're breeding or? Yeah, that's, okay. that's all theirs. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, I almost have to look at my folders. Hold on a second here mm -hmm. to, see here if I can because that's what I'm saying I'm up to 80 strains and when I think about it sometimes I forget about the strains I had done you could also go to oh if you want to learn a little more about me I if you go to uh, green leaf magazine or I think it's greenleafmag.com mm -hmm. 
I was uh, the cover story for their last printed issue. I don't know if they're still printing. The whole COVID has kind of really done some crazy stuff. I'll put that in, uh, when we post our recording, I'll put a, uh, that in there as well so they can go to read that. And of course, I'll also, uh, if you don't mind, we'll tag your Instagram. So yeah. you'll right. be able to go and see all those photos. Take a look at this one I just did for a company in, uh, here in Detroit. But here's, oh, here's a, where I've been doing, where I've gotten real smart. Whereas I've done a strain design because I'm doing my tribute designs, right? Right. And then I meet a breeder grower who's growing that strain. Mm -hmm. And then we have a conversation. How about this artwork I've done? And let's just customize it more to you. And this is what you're looking at right now. Mm -hmm. So I had done the wedding cake design. It was actually just in pencil. And then he and I had a conversation as a, I'm a, you pay for it, you can use it to help sell your medicine. And that's exactly what we did. So it's Detroit Diesel, great caregiver here in the city. I see you've got the girls, the cookie for the Girl Scout cookie. Down well, right, you know, it's like <laughs> yeah. the phenos, the, you know, the cherry mm -hmm. phenos, the cherry pie. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the other thing is that, you know, to the, to the layman, you don't really quite get what I'm doing, but it doesn't matter because I'm creating this detail that the, uh -huh. the, that the connoisseurs will appreciate. Sure. And I'm acknowledged all the time when I do it too. So, and sometimes corrected. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know what to look for when I see, you know, your artwork. I'm, I am immediately, my eyes go start digging inside instead of looking at the overall view. So I can try to pick the stories out. I'm curious. Can I ask a question back to you? It's because. Sure. Sometimes I think my work is almost like too much. Because, you know, you can't, you know, sometimes you want to just look at art. You just want to see what it is you know, the strong, simple thing, but you look at my work, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to read this. <laughs> in my opinion, that's what draws you in. Um, okay, cool. You know, you can, you can pass by any photo and say, oh, that's nice. But to be able to stop, look, and actually start diving in and it pulls you in, right. that means they're stopping and looking and, and actually taking in the photo. So, I mean, it's cool. just a great concept, in my opinion. Here's, I'm going to give away a little secret to someone, because not everything, sometimes when I'm working, oh, maybe I shouldn't show this. I'm not going to show this. No, I am going to show this. I use this occasionally. And then what this is, do you see this? Yes. This is kind of my little bud leaf um, vault, where sometimes if I need to do a little filler in the background or something, I don't have to redraw the whole damn thing. You just uh, grab what you need and pull it over. I well, and I, but I, it would never be the, the main course, you know, but there are instances like, oh, I need a bunch of leaves in the background. And I, I would do this in the case of where it's more of a background kind of a, a pattern or something like that. Mm -hmm. I must have used it recently. That's why I had it up on the screen. <laughs> oh yeah, I, grabbed, I did. I need. I needed one leaf. Oh, here. You see that center leaf? Yeah. Oh, I remember why I brought it up. So check this out. I'm working on this right now for a company back east. They love their cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and let's grow. Blue Buds Grow Club. They're gonna. Have, they're gonna kind of put together a little club. This is a preliminary. It's not the final, but. So I, they needed a, they wanted a leaf in there just so for the preliminary design before I drew it, saves me some time just to throw this in. Is that what you like? If they do, then I can always customize it more to them and mm -hmm. it's, it's a unique piece. So it's all good. That's kind of looks like my cat. <laughs> yeah, that was, and that was the hard part because it's a, it's like a Persian cat. Mm -hmm. Right. And I said, you know, you want your Persian cat. And so here's where I'm working with the client, you know, it's like, First of all, cats aren't the easiest to draw, to tell you the truth. Dogs are much easier to draw than cats. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. It's the nose or the mouth. And then a Persian cat, with, excuse me, with their pushed-in face, it's, right. hard, it's hard to make them look happy. That's why they usually call them grumpy cats. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
So, but I think I did a good job there. So yeah, I do like I do like that illustration quite well. Um, but listen, if if anything out of this session today, you got a little something here to to be inspired to, you know, stay true north. Stick to what I what I'll say to everybody is know what you do best, and hone that to a hone that to a fine skill, and you'll always have that. And it's just a matter of applying it to whatever part of. Tell me a little bit more about what's the what's the focus of the class again? Well, this is for all students actually, so they could be taking uh, you know several different types of majors. Uh, but we, it's the focus is cannabis, obviously. Right. Uh, and, you know, we have cultivation, we have, um, right. medical, we have, you know, all the different aspects of, uh, exactly. cannabis and how you, how it could apply. Um, tell me a little bit about Michigan. I know you're up there and mm -hmm. I know they just recently kind of switched over from a medical forum to more of a recreational. recreational. What, what I'm not, I'm not thrilled about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not thrilled about it. I think um, you know, this whole rush to legalization, you know, too many, uh, there's too much um, collateral damage to the medical side, I think. Um, you know, the medical, medical, the patients are being forgotten and the, and, the, and the basis of what the medicine's about is being forgotten too. Um, but yeah, I, it's an interesting place because there, it's also, if it's done, you know, the rec, and I hate the term recreational, tell you the truth. <laughs> it's le that just means it's legal now. I know, but you know, are they, do they call alcohol recreational? Right. Well, it kind of is. Yes. <laughs> so it should, it should be called recreational as well. <laughs> Right. And I mean, I, I, my question, are they still going to continue the medical program? Or is it just and that's the thing. I don't know the specifics, but I do know in talking about the, the grower, I just, the, the, the caregiver I just showed you, he was making a big decision mm -hmm. as to whether to go recreational or to stay medical. Because, I, I, well, you know, the obvious choice money wise is to go recreational. But I had a conversation with him because he was having druthers about it. And he said, I said, listen, I said, you know what? It might be a little harder road, but at the end of the road, you might come out shining as a, as a credible medical provider versus just a recreational. I don't know how it's going to work. I really don't. I, I, I have dreams of someday that you'll go into a um, sort of like a Cabela's kind of a store and you'll walk in, it'll be all cannabis, and you'll walk in, and so you'll see your, to the right, you'll see the actual, uh, maybe you'll see apparel, you know, and to the left, you'll see accessories, and then in the middle is all the product, and then, which I even thought was even cooler, and in the back, just like in, in a Costco or whatever, there's a pharmacy for the medical side, you know, for someone who really is going in there to get something for their you know, not about buying a six pack off the shelf. Right. I like the concept. Because I don't think the, you know, the, the uneducated public should be playing around with it, really. Right. Well, has it affected you, though, moving from a medical to recreational state and what you do? Has it affected your business at all? No. People still need to promote. People still need to get their brand. Yeah, I'm having a little conscience issue sometimes with because, Over for example, you know the, the what's happening. And I see in the industry is, um, you know, the, there's more money to be made by using all of the product with no way. So everybody's doing extract, doing it for extraction. Mm -hmm. And I'm not. I don't want to be quote as saying I, I'm against extraction, but the, the the motivation is more from an aspect of, you know, not what the plant's about. It's all just about making money at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Right. Well, 
Yeah, I, I guess we all have a different opinion on what, you know, as far as uh, what we like best or what medicine we would prefer. No, no, exactly. I think you should have your, mm -hmm. I think extraction should be part of the choices. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess it's the mentality of, of that. It, it, see, I have a, a certain affinity for just the, uh, the pure, uh, just flower, just the whole aesthetic. Mm -hmm. of you know and 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 just that dosage of what it comes and now yeah, that's obviously changed with genetics and all that as well but um just this this high potency is um it's we got to be careful about it that's all absolutely you definitely uh need to be uh have how do i want to say this have some tolerance build up before you move into consequences <laughs> well right and i I know stories of people, you know, just the terrible stories of people with edibles because they just didn't know better and they weren't and nothing happened to them, but they got, you know, they got deathly ill, but then as soon as they were done being ill, they were fine. Right. But they didn't know that, but they didn't know that. So then they, you know, oh, called nine. I know two cases where people called 911, you know, and. Mm -hmm. And so they get to the hospital <laughs> and they put them through the drug overdose protocol, which is a joke because all they got to do is give them some fluids, you know. So have you ever done any artwork for concentrates uh, or concentrate companies? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, well, usually what happens it's, they get me in because of the flower and then, Oh, well, we need a vape cartridge box designed. Mm -hmm. But no, I'm doing, I do, I, uh, you know, where the, the business is booming, it's kind of slowed down a little bit because of COVID, but is uh, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma is the burgeoning, is the leading edge, in, is the leading edge state right now. And that's another thing here. Here's a good uh, little tidbit for the people, your students, mm -hmm. is especially if they're mobile, if they, if, if they're not finding the opportunity here in in Ohio or wherever they are is that what I've noticed is if you go to a state that is recently gone legal and you're at the head of the line of establishing your, yourself as a as a company as a cannabis company I think you have greater greater opportunity of uh, maybe succeeding especially if you're a good company absolutely Hi, Luke. Luke's joining us uh, that's just a, another entry. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I can just vision, you know, especially maybe a, a, a big rosin press and, and seeing you have like drippings of the rosin or, or the oh, wait, do I have that? I probably don't have that on this. That's, that's okay if you don't. No, but pressing heads. I just did it for an Oklahoma company where I literally amorphosized the press where I made it a creature. Oh, okay. Yes, you gotta go go to my IG. Let's see if I can find it here. Maybe I can even find it here. So what is your at IG address? It's at? It's T just T-Dog, T-D-O-G, mm -hmm. T to the D to the mother love and O-G. T-D-O-G, the artist, T-Dog, T the artist. Okay, T-Dog, the artist. So. Uh, some of the ones that you actually don't see here today, please go to his Instagram and please show him some love. Show him It'll some be love. a visual overload. You'll love it. Yeah. Everybody loves my page. Well, not everybody. I just hit 4,000. That's nice. That's hey, Tom, can, I, can I share something with you? Yeah. Sure. Go when, ahead. When I was a kid, I got in big trouble because I, uh, I seen this, this big old caterpillar. He, was smoking a joint playing the inner guitar. So I decided to paint it on my bedroom wall. <laughs> my parents, <laughs> they didn't appreciate it because I had all different colors and stuff. <laughs> See? So it, it was it was pretty amazing. I had I got in big trouble behind that one. Do you have pictures of it? Do you still have any pictures? No, nah, this was a long time ago when I was a I might have been twelve. Well no, because I, I it's funny you say that because I did one of my friends uh bedroom when we were teenagers and his mother loved me but hated what I drew on the wall and it was this amazing like pterodactyl and all this stuff and 
and it, it got painted over as soon as he went to college and then it somehow a, a photograph of it emerged about 20 years ago it was very cool yeah my, my brother went to uh columbus uh ccad here in columbus and i used to he had an art room at the house i used to just watch him draw all the time and then go over to the school and watch him do his thing i was always wanted to do that but i never got into it so it's all right i'm going to see if i can find this the one that you were asking for my pressing heads yes 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 so what do we got planned for the weekend everybody are we going to be productive uh, that's uh jinx proof i love when he's on the phone i want you all be productive and be positive and be positive oh i don't know if she ever made the video but at a ham fest uh miss rose had everybody do an imitation of jinx we put on the orange hat and the white glasses and she videoed it and we all tried we all tried to do our own imitation of him i bet he enjoyed that i know uh, he i wish i could find some that. medical procedures and i'm glad to know that he's doing well i know it's like the guy it doesn't stop with him and and he keeps on powering through but it's that nine amazing. pound hammer um you know is beloved all over so it really is and and you know, and that's the other. Th oh, here it is. I, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Oh, here. Uh, go back to uh, not sharing. Okay. Let's see if this works. If you can see it. Hold on. Oh yeah. Oh. So that was the original drawing, but yeah. So I made this character out of the press. Oh, I love that. That is so, that is. So <laughs> and it's solventless as well. So that's, you know. Yeah, full spectrum. There full we go. Full spectrum. Exactly. Well, does anybody have any other questions before we wrap this green hour up? I just kind of wanted to give the you. Green an hour. I love it. Yeah. Oh, and I'm going to do one little shout out for a company that I'm okay. doing work for. It's called Why Bogart. Okay. And the kids don't know what Bogart means so much, but the older people do. And that sure. was the term, don't Bogart that joint. Right. But they have created, and I'm working in junction with them. It's a one hitter. Okay. Okay. It has a little stainless tip and with holes in it. So stainless steel, so that it'll hold the heat. And then it's made out of paper, but I'm designing the custom artwork that's going to be when they produce them. Oh, how nice. So they're trying to support artists. This is a collaborative project that we're doing where I'm promoting them, they're promoting me. And, uh, but the coolest part, and I don't have the, the thing with me. Oh, shoot. Do I or do I? I don't. But the coolest part of their device is that they have this little sticker that on either side so you can pack your one hitter and then put this little sticker on top so you, it travels so you won't lose any of the weed and you can put three of them or whatever and take them to a concert <laughs> you know what i'm saying and this is take off the sticker light it up yeah great concept especially now and it's funny because now with covid mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you won't want to share the joint but you can hey just right. stick a little piece of person's flower so you could still smoke their flower or whatever. So right. Little disposable type things. Yeah. Exactly. Or at least it looks that way. Yeah. All right. Sorry for the little No, no. We enjoyed <laughs> the time with you. I, I I found out quite a few things I didn't know already. And I can't uh, wait to see you again at an event, hopefully. Yeah, soon. I hope so too. Yeah. Um, it's good to yeah. see good to see you and I love your little green screen. That's very cool. <laughs> What I, okay, so where what room are you in actually? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, we well, I'm at the school, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, but yeah, so the university. We, <laughs> so we will uh, continue. We'll put this recording on um, the uh, platform, our software platform, Excellent. so all students will have an opportunity to see this. Uh, if they want to contact you for questions, do you have a good contact email or something? Everything's on the IG, but they can definitely okay. go to, oh, 
definitely check out my line. We, you know, I didn't want to push my stuff anymore, but I have a line of apparel that's very cool that with the strain, various strain designs. It's two tokes.com. The number two, T O K E S dot com. In fact, can I bring something up here? Hold on. Yes, please do. Here, let's see if I can bring something up here. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Go to my Photoshop. Open. Where's my two tokes? There we go. Right. Creative projects. <laughs> There be two tokes in this file. Oh, this is kind of cool. I'll bring this up. This is a good one. So you can, are you sharing the screen? You've got to share for me. I, I, I Oh, right. Sorry there. about that. Okay. There we go. Sharing screen right now. Okay, so these are some of the designs on the, as you can see, there's the logo down there, the two tokes, but it's two tokes.com. Okay. So it's on like t-shirts or you can just apply it on. Uh, no, you, you'll you just go to the site. You can get right now. We've got hats and shirts right now. We're, we'll, we're going to have hoodies soon, but it's just hats and shirts. And I'm going to be putting together, um, I'm doing this thing. So through my Instagram where you can, purchase prints of my work. So you don't necessarily, you know, if you just want to put it on your wall, you know, put it in your girl room. Like a poster of sorts. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that as well. So keep an eye on twotokes.com. Oh, you can go get my poster at whatsyourstrain.com. Spell out what's your strain. Just replace the uh, S and what's with a Z. So it's W-H-A-T-Z. What's your strain.com? Perfect. And, I, and you can also see it in my office. Perfect. <laughs> um, perfect so I'll perfect. put that on on uh, on the site as well. All right. Well, well, let's, you know, maybe we can come back in a few months and and I'll have some new stuff to dazzle the dazzle the audience with. <laughs> that would be awesome. I, I really appreciate your time today. And I'm sure the students are going to love this interview when they get a chance to, or, you know, for those who didn't get a chance to show today. And I get love your that. butt hat. That's the butt hat. Okay. <laughs> and then, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll be able to meet up soon at an event near us and uh, go back. I'd to like to do that. And maybe, you know, they'll figure out too, how we can, you know where it's not as many people still have i maybe that's what the future will be smaller sesh events you know there you go and hey send me your address i'd love to send you cleveland uh, oh yeah cannabis. i'll wear one of those shirts do you there have you that in shirt yeah we'll, oh, get it. we'll hook you up make sure that absolutely you i'll represent as well right i'll represent ohio as long as it doesn't have uh, um ohio state colors yeah, you, we don't want to <laughs> get jumped in the streets or anything. But yeah, that would be perfect. No uh, silver and red. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> All right. Okay. See you later. Thanks, thanks so much. God. Thanks. Bye. Nice meeting you, John. David, nice thanks for too. hanging on for so long. You're the man. You're welcome. Yeah, peace. Awesome. Happy Friday. You too.